are talking about the accessory glands of females so there are two kinds of accessory glands in females one is your vestibular gland and one is your mammary gland which is also known as breasts so basically vestibular glands are of two types the greater vestibular and the lesser vestibular so first we're going to talk about greater vestibular gland which is also known as the Bartholin glands and this gland is present in pear and it, it, it is a very small gland which is red yellow in color and is present on left and right side of the vaginal opening so vaginal opening ke right side and left side may gland present hota which is also known as this Bartholin gland and if I function ki baat karun, so this Bartholin gland, it secretes an alkaline secretion. So basically it secretes the alkaline secretion and what does this alkaline secretion do? It provides the lubrication to the vagina. So it provides the lubrication and as well as it neutralizing the urinary acidity. So urine ki acidity ko kam karne ke liye, because urine is acidic in nature. So neutralize karne ke liye, Bartholin gland ek secretion secrete karta which is alkaline and also the secretions help in the lubrication or to the vagina so this is all about this Bartholin gland which is also known as greater vestibular or it is a subtype of your vestibular gland which is also known as accessory gland of females so the second type of vestibular gland is the lesser vestibular gland which is also known as the paraurethral glands or the skinny's gland they are very small and the mucus secreting gland and it is present between the urethra and vagina opening so between the urethra and vagina opening there is a space where these glands are present and these glands are very small and they secrete mucus so the second type of accessory glands in females is memory glands or breasts so breast are in pair and it is a round structure present over the pectoralis major muscle what does this mean here you will see the figure and this is the ribs in which which are connected through the intercostal muscles which is present between the ribs and in front of this there is a mus major muscle known as pectoralis major muscle so this round breast is present over this pectoralis major muscle. They remain rudimentary in males as you all know. In females they remain undeveloped till puberty but after the puberty it starts developing due to the release of estrogen and progesterone hormones. Each breast has a central portion so this central portion it has a projection known as nipple at the center and beside this area the nipple have hyperpigmented area known as areola which contains areolar glands so breast contain three types of tissue the glandular tissue fibrous or connective tissue and fatty or adipose tissue so there are three types of tissue present in the breast so I'm talking about now glandular tissue first so glandular tissue as the name suggests contains glands so here you can see the diagram in the breast the whole of the breast this one this area this consists of your glandular tissue so here you can see that each of your um, glandular tissue so the glandular tissue comprises of lobes this lobe this it, it is a one lobe so there are 15 to 20 lobes as this is present so 15 to 20 lobes is present in each breast and each lobe contains lobules these are chote chote these are said to be lobules and these lobules has milk secreting glands which is also known as alveoli so this helps in the production of milk and when milk starts secreting from the glands it is transferred to your memory tubules so these are the tubules these are the alveoli so these are the tubules which 
send milk okay so, and these tubules send milk to the memory ampulla this is memory ampulla and then from this memory ampulla some milk may be stored so memory ampulla in memory ampulla some milk may be stored before going to lactiferous duct here is a duct present so before going outside some of the milk got stored in the memory ampulla and then through lactiferous duct milk got secreted out so it is all about the glandular tissue so i told you that glandular tissue consists of 15 to 20 lobes in each breast and in each lobe there are so many lobules and these lobules has a milk secreting glands which is also known as alveoli and this alveoli is a gland which, which is secreting milk and then send the signal then send the milk to the memory tubules so these are the memory tubules and from these memory tub, uh, tubules the milk sent to the memory ampulla and then to the lactiferous duct and then it is out from the nipple next is the fibrous or connective tissue so this fibrous or connective tissue it helps and supports the alveoli and the ducts so this connective tissue supports the alveoli and the ducts so it has a supporting function next is fatty or adipose tissue as you will see it is it is the amount of adipose tissue that determines the size of the breast so the size of the breast is determined this type of fatty tissue more the fatty tissue or adipose tissue is present more the size of the breast appears functions of memory glands or breast are first secretion and ejection or release of milk that is lactation so milk secretion and milk ejection is the primary function of the memory glands and lactation is associated with pregnancy and the childbirth so after the birth of the baby the mother mother starts secreting or eject, ejecting milk that is the procedure of lactation starts now the milk production in the memory glands is stimulated by the hormone known as prolactin so prolactin is a hormone so you can see that prolactin is a hormone which is secreted by anterior pituitary it helps in the formation of milk production so milk production is stimulated by the prolactin hormone which is released by anterior pituitary and milk production you will like ejection of milk the release of milk is stimulated by the hormone known as oxytocin which is released by your posterior pituitary so posterior pituitary release and hormone known as oxytocin which helps in releasing of milk from the memory glands on an average a nursing woman secretes one to two liters of milk per day so human milk what does it contain so human milk contains water organic and inorganic substances so main ingredient of the human milk are water organic and inorganic substances so it contains fats casein which is a milk protein lactose which is a milk sugar and mineral salts like potassium phosphorus sodium ions so these mineral salts are present and of course vitamins but milk is poor in iron content milk do not contain iron and vitamin c is also present in very small quantity so this is all about the accessory glands we discuss the two type that is the vestibular gland and the memory glands or the breasts so breast contain three types of tissue the glandular tissue fibrous or connective tissue and fatty or adipose tissue so there are three types of tissue present in the breast so i'm talking about now glandular tissue first so glandular tissue as the name suggests contains glands so here you can see the diagram in the breast the whole of the breast this one this area this consists of your glandular tissue so here you can see that each of your 
glandular tissue consists of so this is the glandular tissue area and each glandular tissue consists of lobes in each breast there is 15 to 20 lobes which is present like this and further this lobe each lobe contain lobules there are so many lobules you can see and in this lobules there is a gland present which is also known as milk secreting gland that is alveoli so in these chote chote lobules you have you may see 